Right, back on the Mercedes C180 compressor, uh, W204 chassis, year 2008. I've finally located a uh, rear subframe. As you're aware from my videos, which I will upload, I haven't done it yet, but that's rusted out. And it's common fault on these. I say it's a bit scabby like, but yeah, common fault on these and loads of... Uh, problems on the forums you can see on the rear subframes so for some reason the two I think there's two, 2008 up to 2011 of the same subframes and then when they went up to the later ones they had a different subframe but the later ones are much cheaper you can get them for sort of 75 quid 145 quid and the older ones now are getting more money I suppose because a bit more scarce the ones that are about are probably rust out already but I've finally track one down and I want to give a big shout out to KSS Autos in Clacton on Sea. Uh, they're really kindly, I got them off eBay, they really kindly uh, sent me the rear subframe assembly down and they used another big shout out to Provia Couriers and they were fantastic. Charged me £50 for, uh, for carriage, like uh, for couriering it and it's probably a couple of hundred miles but they was fantastic it took about two days to come they kept me in touch all the time and uh via email and text and let me know when i was 30 minutes away really nice and friendly fantastic service but this subframe is off of 2009 it's slightly different in the fact that my uh discs on the back were single discs these are vented and also it looks like it's got a suspension self leveling suspension or or, don't, or maybe it's for the brakes, I don't know, but I'm not sure mine had that on there when I took it apart, but I'm sure I can work with it. And mine didn't have an anti-roll bar on. I don't know why, but everyone said it should have. But I think it was, mine was one of the first of the changeover, yeah. So maybe they decided they need it later on. But I'm sure, as I say, that looks almost the same. The bracket's all the same. If it bolts up, it's going to fit and it's going to work. So I'm sure I can make something happen. And I'm sure with a vented disc on the back, it's going to be a lot better stopping as well. Hopefully it's not going to give no problems, but I've got the brake calipers on there. Uh, and as I say, the boom's complete. My One of my core springs are broke, so they included that for me. And also I asked them if they could keep the brakes because on my, some of the bushes, there you can see the bolts just seized into the uh, bushes and it would not come out and same again that side as well and I've got the bushes that are in the uh, subframe I've got the bolts in there so hopefully I can oh the differential didn't come the price I give 300 pound for the uh, complete rear subframe minus the differential which I don't need mine's perfectly good and if it was a diesel then it would be different gearing I should think anyway so everything I need, differential from mine, I'm going to bolt that in there and I'm going to try to bolt that up and hopefully I can start piecing it all together. So there we are and no excuse now for me to get underneath there and start changing things over and bolting it up. Alright next day I have to get the subframe delivered. I give it a little bit of paint on the top where the uh, paint was flaking off a little bit and a little bit of surface rust so give it a quick wide brush down and give it a hit with the uh, Amorite black paint and also I've done these springs as well there's a few little bits where the plastic coating had uh, come off and uh, a little bit of rust there and so I just covered it up one it looks, makes it look nicer two it just stops it getting any worse so I've done the top side which is going against the chassis so when it's up and fitted then I can do the underside as well if it needs it trolley uh show you what it is just a little bit of 18 mil ply hope you can see that just sun shining on it 18 mil ply with a bit of batten 2b1 batten around the outside and i put two 4b2 legs on there as well and i got some wheels i oh, it's about i don't know 75 mil wheels 80, 80 mil wheels i got off ebay for a set and then nylon heavy duty on bearings so i've got two fixed rigid ones on the front and then that's on there and two swivels on the bottom and they've got brakes on as well if I need it but why I did that was 
and a bit of foam I'll put on top as well. Yeah, why I did that was uh, what I want to do because I've got no idea gives and a minute is I want to put this. I need to lift it up in the air and get it located on the bolts, but there's nothing flat on the bottom, and the only thing that protrudes it really is the diff when it's in there. And if I stick that on the trolley jack, it's not going to line up this is going to be all off center like you know not off center but it's just going to be unbalanced so i thought if i make a little trolley up i can sit the back subframe complete on the trolley and i did it high enough why i put the 4 2 under there is i can slide the trolley jack underneath there i can get a center of it and i can jack it up and it will hold it there and uh unfortunately billy no mates you uh, have to do it by yourself so anyway that's that I'm going to uh, start disconnecting that diff there, try and get that in there, and turn it on its side and uh, start assembling it ready to go in. So you don't need to watch me doing that. If there's anything untoward, I'll come back and describe it to you. But I'll come back to you when the diff's on there. Right, on the drive shaft on the uh, C180 Merc, you've got like an outer plate there. And it's like a flange now if you look at the other side so you've got like the drive shaft cv joint there and you've got like a metal dust cover plate if it was me well a lot of people maybe you'd think you need to separate it from there but you don't and the reason i know that is because i was looking at this one in there but yeah all i did get like a fatted screwdriver and Right, can you see that? Yeah. Right. Just tap the screwdriver in there. Tap it really hard and it just squeezes out. And that's it. That's how you pop at the drive shaft. And as I say, you just go behind the metal plate and you don't have to give it much force at all. Just tap it and it'll just slowly squeeze out. And that's it. So I'm just going to pull these out and then try and get the diff in there. Right, first. Uh, little obstacle come across the obviously the differential is missing on this uh, model subframe I believe it come off a C350 which uh, obviously is a lot more powerful engine a lot bigger engine uh, so right the diff was gone but it was different if you ever look that's the drive shafts that come with that differential for this subframe and the actual uh, the shaft is the same diameter, but the actual spline, this uh, diameter of the spline is uh, is probably about three mil thicker. So what I've done, I've had to change the drive shaft over from my C180 to the uh, C350, but the hubs are the same, the hub bearings and the spline. The actual drive shafts are the same length, just that these, from there, sorry, from there, to the end it's only this bit where's my finger that's right there right it's only this bit which is different it's a little bit shorter and so you see that there that's a bit longer so this goes inside the diff uh, a little bit further and obviously it's different diameter so i was lucky the drive shaft uh, to the hub which is there which is the same spline and it's the same length so at the moment i've put the I've kept the vented disc off the 350. That's obviously why the discs are bigger and beefier, but I've got the caliper for it. So I'll probably be uh, <laughs> locking the back wheels up every time I break. So yeah, so I just need to change this one over. So unbolt at the hub and then I can change the drive shaft over and the same on that one. So that's good. And then I should be able to get the diff in place then. And hopefully, It'll be ready to bolt up, just give it a quick clean up and bend any bits of metal that's bent and I might touch up with a bit of paint and then I'll be ready to uh, get it on the trolley and get it in. Right, the diff's back in the uh, back subframe now and <laughs> went in quite easy actually. A little bit of spillage come out the back but note to myself, remember to uh, top up the diff fluid when it's bolted up. But yeah, what I did, I put both drive shafts in, I tightened up each end, knocked the little nibs in to lock them in place. And then this diff, I managed to pull it forward 
rest on my knee and then put one of the drive shaft in just at an angle and slide it in and then tap it in place and then pull it out again because you've got if you lift it up a little bit like along there you can get nearly probably 40 degrees on it so obviously as you're lifting it up you're bringing it over and then once that was locked in I sort of balanced on my knee held it up in the air lifted this drive shaft out again up I got about 40 degrees and as I lowered it down I maneuvered it in place pushed it in and clunk and I just give it a little tap with the uh, rubber mallet in there and it locked them in place so that went in really nice found the bolts for the uh, diff right ones put them on there the mouse splines and two more one there and one there and I got them inserted but not tight what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull it over onto my lovely trolley and uh, then I'll be able to tighten them up and I'll show you on my lovely trolley provided it don't collapse right managed to lift onto the uh, trolley and didn't crush no look at that lovely look I mean my floor is not the smoothest of floors in the world but look at that perfect and because I've got two wheels and I can spin it around rotate it and that's perfect it's even on my rough old floor so I'll just tighten the diff up them two there's this one and this one and then I'm going to take off the rear shocks one because mine I'm bolted from the bottom plus it's too high to go in so hopefully my lovely contraption will slide underneath the uh, car and because I put the 4 bit on the bottom I've got probably six inches clearance under there and I can get the trolley jack under there so I can get the center of it and I can lift it up and I've got something secure I can get the bolts in and I can wiggle it around a little bit so I'm gonna whip the uh, struts off the rear shocks and I'm gonna slide it in and all right subframes now underneath the car in place I want to connect the handbrake cable first and try and get in there because it is a nightmare of a job to do otherwise so I'm going to try and get in there somehow and uh, get that handbrake cable done connected up and then I just got the core springs to go on and I can jack it up and start bolting it up so I'm going to dive in there now so I can get the handbrake done right here's an update got the exhaust on albeit I've got the last little uh, rubber to do but it's held up there and it's bolted up what I'll do is I'll take some of my mate's ramp and I'll do it on that just loosen it off in the coupling and then uh, just twist it up and squeeze that rubber on need to be pulling on it really which I can't do lying on my back so got the uh, shields on all the uh, heat uh, underside plastics back on and it's all bolted up all I've got to do now is do the diff oil, top that up, which I lost a little bit. I might even do that on my mate's ramp. It might be easier than, I say, groveling underneath it. Plus I need one of those syringes, which I don't know if I'm going to be asked to find mine. But now I'm onto the uh, round here. Connecting the brakes up. So hopefully I can just spin that hose off and it should just screw straight in the back of these calipers and hope, hopefully it's going to be okay and plug in the uh, ABS sensors again hoping that's going to be the same on the uh, slightly different uh, differential setup and uh, hub setup say because mine had a single disc and this had uh, a vented disc and also I need to do the handbrake got one side connected but again I think I'll do it on mate's ramp and uh, and it all should be all up and running. The car starts up, just started that up. First time, six months, it starts straight up. All right, I'm gonna record this moment because it's a long time coming. And there it goes, wheels on. Jack down. And back on its own wheels. Phew.